it's like what Spencer Hamilton mentioned in episode one the, the the thing that all authors are hearing over and over is write what you know and we do yeah. that but sometimes we don't even know what we know we're writing exactly. it out it's coming from an experience that maybe we've buried that we've forgotten about that we've locked away and I'd like to transition from that and read another quote because I feel like yeah. you you captured this perfectly when when this voice that isn't really our voice, but when that voice is coming out and telling us, you know, that you're you, you don't need any help, keep this to yourself, people won't believe yeah. you, people think you're crazy, whatever the thing might be. Um, this comes from later in the book and focusing on the character of Strode, but the quote is this: that's how Strode's mind worked, even on his good days the stains of trauma entombed him. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this, this sense of, actually, I can't remember if we were recording or it was pre-recording, but I know I mentioned something about feeling claustrophobic, <laughs> feeling closed in, caged in, and you, yeah. you perfectly captured that. They're feeling entombed by that past trauma. Yeah. How do we get out of it? Yeah. So I think, like I said, the only way, I wrote a little bit about this in, in my note from the author with Not Another Sarah Halls, and it goes back to my love of it. You know, for a while, it was this creepy ass clown that we hide from. You know, it was these, these scary conjurings that we run from. But in the end, that only gave momentary relief. It wasn't, you know, not prolonged closure. And so, the older I got, I started to think of my life like as if I was walking around with Pennywise. And whenever I had some trauma coming up, I could just picture like Pennywise like dancing, like, ha, ha gotcha. And, uh, and so instead of running, it was like I turned around and I wanted to look it in the face and say, you know, why are you here? Who are you? And with that, then I learned how to beat it. And, or, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it never, even Pennywise, he hangs out a few years, you know, he comes back, he comes back, yeah, but yeah. it was more than momentary relief. It was like, for once I had the upper hand. So I still had like the ghost following me, but I knew what to do with it. And that's really what it comes down to. And it, you know, each of the kids has their own way in the end of standing up to Pennywise. And so I think the answer is, in horror, we're taught to run, you know, running saves your life. That's, that's the huge final girl trope, you know, the girl who ran and the girl who, but what I love is it's the girls who face the monsters. It's the Lori Strodes who don't just hide in the closet, but hide and are fastening a, a, a hanger wire to jam Michael Myers in the eye. And, and since then, you know, when they're carrying her away to the hospital, she wants to know more. She's afraid, but she's not just, okay, I'm, I'm safe. Like this is fine. She wants to know more. And I realized that this same sort of investigative lens that I, I do when I'm researching for books and writing books, it was time to turn the light onto myself and specifically my trauma and know it and name it. And that's what allowed me to mourn it. Mm, wow. And mourning, yeah, I, mourning is so freeing. It really is allowing myself to mourn, mourn that childhood that I don't feel that I had, um, mourn that little girl who felt very stuck and for years, you know, felt she had to wear a mask and hide what was going on in her life and hide that, hide her shaking hands. I remember so much in high school, um, putting my hands like under my desk or pretending I was fidgeting with like a, a tear in my jeans. And it was because my hands were so shaky all the time because I was just so anxious all the time. Wow. Yeah. And I, I fear that a lot of people don't realize that grieving is part of the healing process. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's something we avoid. But like I said, I allowing myself to mourn was the best thing I did. So I actually, for once I spent time with the events that happened and I am not going to say it was easy. Um, after I wrote the first part of Take Your Turn Teddy, part one, um, I was probably at one of the lowest points I've ever been in my life. And it was just because 
reliving so much of that was was very very difficult and then coming to terms with I didn't just write this in Teddy Teddy you know this was from me and in the end you know Teddy becomes so so isolated and that's how I felt and so I had to take the time to say this wasn't just a fictional character this was young Haley and I had to give that that young little girl inside of me who has been trying to get attention you know, I had to give her that.